Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we've got a big in-depth review, seasoning, and cooking feature on this guy. This is a Debouillet French-made carbon steel oval roasting pan. Welcome home, buddy. In today's video, we're gonna go through all its stats and features. It's carbon steel. We're gonna give it its initial cleaning and seasoning. Then we're gonna cook a bunch of hopefully delicious food. See if this is a good, high quality roasting pan for your money. I don't know. Let's get started. The pan has two stainless steel loop handles, one on each end, each connected with two rivets. The handles are oven safe and obviously will get screaming hot when used in an oven. Now I use the word obviously, but it's crazy how many times I forget that and accidentally grab a hot handle. It's 2.5 millimeters thick and weighs in at almost five pounds. So that's a good, heavy, thick, sturdy pan. Full retail is around $130, but if you wait for sales and or shop around, you can sometimes find one cheaper. I got mine for around $90 all in. And as always, I purchased it with my own money. This is not a free review model. The packaging says the pan is 14 and 1 fifth inches long. Now a fifth of an inch, my tape measure comes in quarter inch increments. Sounds a little bit like confusing metric to me, so let's round off and call it 14 and a quarter inch. That's close enough. Using a little high school math for the area of an oval, I get a ballpark cooking surface area of about 100 square inches. This is about 15 to 20 percent less than a traditional 13 by 9 baking pan or a 12 inch cast iron skillet for that matter. It's made from carbon steel, which we know needs to be seasoned and maintained, kind of sort of like a cast iron skillet. Comes with a protective coating of beeswax applied at the factory, hence the B in Mineral B and the little guy in the logo. This protects the pan from any kind of rust during the shipping process. And here you can actually see some of this beeswax on the surface. These aren't grubby fingerprints, but rather illustrate the amount of beeswax that ships on the pan. The little instruction booklet has generic instructions for the overall Mineral B carbon steel lineup and calls for using hot water to remove most, but not all, of the beeswax before season. Now how do you know if you've removed the right amount of beeswax? You actually don't, but thankfully it doesn't matter that much. While the booklet calls for seasoning the generic lineup of Mineral B's on the stovetop, I'm actually going to season this one in the oven. Here I wash the pan with hot water, no soap, dry it, and wipe about a half a teaspoon of grapeseed oil all over the pan. Wipe it again so that it looks dry, then into a 450 degree oven for an hour, then let it cool. And then it looks like this. Okay, so we've given the pan a nice good initial seasoning in the oven. When I took it out, you can notice that the color has definitely started to change. It went from kind of a shiny silvery to now almost more of a little bit of a bronze. You can see some brown coming in. But I note here that it is definitely not jet black. It's not like some of those jet black shiny pans you see sometimes on the internet. And that's okay though. I'm just gonna go ahead and start cooking, just seasoning at one time. Not gonna worry about trying to change the color and darken the entire thing yet. Now also, I forgot to do earlier, is show that the pan arrived flat. No warp, no spin, and it's been through the oven, so that's still a good thing there. Okay, enough talking, let's cook some food. Here I've got about two pounds of Earth Farms Brussels sprouts. You know, I almost got the Martian, but I do prefer to eat local when I can. Wash them really well. Then you want to dry them so that they brown up rather than steam in the oven. And here I'm removing that tough end and I'm splitting them in half. I like to remove a couple of the outer layers. Sometimes those can get a little bit too chewy. So I remove a few of those. Then give them a good coating in some good olive oil. Then go some salt and pepper. Mix those really well. Now normally I just cook these on a cookie sheet. Bah! We've got a nice French oval roasting pan here. Into the roasting pan they go. I turn these face down. So into a preheated 425 degree oven they go. I start checking these after about 20, 22 minutes. Make sure that they are crispy on the outside, but tender and not too crunchy on the inside. And absolutely delicious. I really do love these things. We are off and cooking. Similar with these Yukon Golds. Got nice texture and browning, but no sticking. You can get both sides brown if you want to flip each one individually, but these were fine with me. A bright idea. 
Now, contrary to what my wife might think, I occasionally do come up with a great idea. It just occurred to me that this griddle top here on this stove is not only for spatulas and salt shakers, there is an actual burner underneath, an oval one at that. And if I remember correctly, we have burner grates somewhere. So while we use the griddle once in a blue moon, after five years, this is the first time I've actually used these burner grates. So to test this pan out on the stovetop, I'm gonna start with some bacon, starting it out in a cold pan. And right off the bat, I like being able to lay out the bacon flat. I bring the pan up to heat, the bacon renders some fat and releases, it's non-stick. And this actually worked very well. Because the bacon lays out flat, the ends aren't as curly as normal, and the oval pan heats nicely on that oval burner underneath. And I note here that that light initial seasoning is just about gone, so we'll probably need a touch-up seasoning soon. And if we can cook bacon on the stovetop, we can sear meat on the stovetop and then take the pan to the oven. So let's try that with a couple of pork tenderloins. I've rubbed these with some kosher salt, some pepper, some stuff from the spice drawer, maybe a little shake of cayenne when my wife wasn't looking. I'm going to brown these just a little on the stove top, then in goes a meat thermometer, then into a hot oven they go. The pan goes nicely from stove top to oven. And here a quick personal note, if you notice I look a little green around the gills, I don't sound quite right. I've got a raging cold. It came on the day before I filmed the intro. Here for the pork roast, I've got about 102 fever. Currently on about day 14, and I've still got part of it. And people say you can eat pork at an internal temp of 145 these days, but I went for 150 just for a little bit of margin of safety. And they turned out nicely, flavorful on the outside and nice and soft and pink in the middle. My wife walked by and said we should make some gravy out of these drippings. So actually back on the burner on the stovetop the pan goes, she put in some flour, some stock, and made some really nice gravy. So the pork and the gravy are great. The only downside here is that we were still working off that one light initial seasoning and the gravy and whisking took off what was left of that. But that is no big deal. Carbon steel needs maintenance. And now that I know I can use this pan on the stovetop, a little stovetop maintenance seasoning is quick and easy. One way I season a pan when I want to darken in certain parts of it is to bring it up to temp and carefully, carefully, carefully put one or two drops of oil on a wad of paper towels and wipe it quickly around the hot surface. Now the key here is to not sear your fingers or hand on a 600 degree cooking surface. So I do this, but whether you want to try it or not is up to you. If you do, just be very careful and make sure you keep plenty of paper towels between your fingers and the hot pan. Now I've learned that I can do this a few times in a row without letting the pan cool down. I just wipe it really well, let it smoke until it stops, then repeat. Now this seasoning is not necessarily very thick, but you can get a pan nice and dark really quickly doing this. And for whatever reason, after cooking a bit and then re-seasoning like this, this seasoning seems to stick and last a little bit longer than those lighter initial seasonings. Real deal mac and cheese. Now, do you guys watch cooking shows on TV? You know, there are often cooks running around like crazy trying to please some berating, overbearing chef. I'm a stay-at-home dad, and while I cook for a different constituency, it is often no less stressful. <coughs> what, you, what are you crying about? What are you crying about? Why are you crying? If you don't have one of these crank cheese grinders, they are really awesome. Fresh ground cheese just seems to melt much more nicely than pre-shredded. I'm making a roux, then a bechamel, cheese, spices, shaken nutmeg, the whole nine yards. And as for the roasting pan, here I decided to go ahead and grease it with some butter. The cheese sauce has a little bit of mustard in there. There's a little bit of vinegar in the mustard, obviously a lot of moisture. So I think it's better safe than sorry here. Mix my pasta and sauce, in it goes. Breadcrumbs and more cheese on top into the oven and oh yeah. Notice after dipping that the seasoning looks fine and dandy. And how did it turn out? What'd you eat? Mac and cheese, hot dog, and blueberries. All right. Do you like that mac and cheese? Yeah. Do you like it better than mom's? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mac mission accomplished. I do like it better than mom's. Good. Now let's bring a few techniques together for some bigger dishes. Bone in skin on chicken thighs with root veggies. I consider this a must go to meal for any roasting pan. We cut up some carrots, potatoes, and onions, got them ready to go with some salt, pepper, and olive oil. Then I took some bone in skin on chicken thighs, dried them with paper towels, no wife jokes here, then rubbed them with some olive oil, salt, pepper, rosemary, thyme, and whatever else looked good in the spice drawer. 
Brown these for about three minutes on the skin side, two minutes on the reverse. Took them out to rest, then cook the veggies for four minutes. Nestle the thighs back in, then the whole thing goes into the oven. And delicious, perfect real food for a weeknight meal. Beef roast, and I'm not going to show all the steps since it's essentially the same process and almost the exact same recipe, just changing the cooking times a little. But this technique worked well for beef roast too. Now let's take a quick peek at using the pan on a flat top stove. This is the first time I've heated the pan on a flat top. I don't have an oval burner, but I hope my biggest round burner would work well. It's got great coverage on the narrow axis, but on the widest, the ends end up hanging over just a bit. And look at this, dreaded spinning. Now it's just physics, but metal expands when it's heated, and carbon steel isn't great at conducting heat efficiently to begin with, so this is what can happen on a flat top stove. It can warp and turn into a spinner. Thankfully, the pan went back into shape as it cooled and no longer spins, but that really forces me to give this pan a two-tiered rating. If you have one of those flat top stoves and want to go from stove top to oven, you're at risk of warping issues, so I would unfortunately avoid this pan. But for everyone else, if you have a gas cooktop, in particular, if you have an oval shaped burner on that cooktop, or you have one of those other cooktops and just want a good pan for the oven, I think this Debouille is a great choice. It did a great job roasting veggies, chicken, pork, and beef. We got good color, texture, and flavor. The pan is sturdy and well made, and when it comes to serving food, it looks about a zillion times better than an aluminum sheet tray. So the Debouillet, French made carbon steel oval roasting pan. I really like this thing, it produced delicious food. It's a good looking, high quality pan. I give it a thumbs up. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and want to see others like it, make sure you subscribe to the old channel here. Make sure you turn on your notifications because just because you're subscribed to the channel doesn't mean YouTube is actually going to show you the videos. You've got to have your notifications on. Leave your questions, comments, and feedback below. Check out the shopping links if you want to get one for yourself. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.